cars. This is multi-domain operations. From engines like the Pratt & Whitney F-135 to the sensor systems and effectors you'll hear about in a few minutes, Raytheon Technologies is leading the way in ensuring the warfighter has what they need to operate in a highly contested environment, successfully complete their missions, and return home safely. Let me now share a short video for you with a vignette that describes how Raytheon Technologies is approaching this challenge in the future warfighting environment. C2, or here in the UK, uh, they call it multi-domain integration, we are all aligned on the same intent, to support a future command, control, and communications network that will connect the battle space across every domain, giving military leaders the ability to make better decisions faster. Today we'll share how Raytheon Technologies is, is, is accelerating data management in the multi-domain battle space. In alignment with the U.S. Department of Defense's JADC2 strategy, we're developing solutions that sense, connect, make sense, and act on the high volume of data available in partnership with allies and partners to speed up the decision-making process. We'll put this into context by sharing how we implement this construct with our multi-domain technologies in the recent U.S. Joint Warfighting Exercise, Valiant Shield 2022. Valiant Shield is a biannual U.S.-only joint field training exercise focused on integration between U.S. forces to strengthen current operational warfighting capabilities. The training enables enhanced proficiency through detecting, locating, tracking, and engaging adversary units at sea, in the air, in space, on land, and in cyberspace. Downing Shield took place last month at Anderson Air Force Base in Guam. Three of our business units, Raytheon Intelligence in Space, Collins Aerospace, and Raytheon Missiles and Defense contributed key enabling technologies to this exercise. We'll continue with the Valley Shield example to give more clarity on what we mean by this. The intelligence captured by the mix of radar and electronic intelligence sensors is delivered to processors on board the RMT testbed aircraft. The processors then synthesize the multi-source intelligence data in seconds to create a comprehensive targeting solution. Valiant Shield marked a milestone in data sharing and speed across multiple assets. The scenario demonstrated our ability to provide successful machine-to-machine -machine communications capabilities to share information securely across a variety of sensors and defense systems. It's a productive step forward for JADC2 since the test provided an environment to combine radar and electronic sensors into a single test bed through the RMT to analyze the data integration in a highly contested environment mission scenario. 
Another example of where we'll deliver a sense-making capability is the U.S. Army's Tactical Intelligence and Access Node Program, or TITAN. RINS is proposing TITAN for the U.S. Army as a tactical ground station or forward deployed system. TITAN will help the U.S. Army plan and execute joint operations in a synchronized and streamlined, ma uh, streamlined manner to enable JADC2. It's designed to receive, process, and disseminate data by sifting autonomously through massive amounts of sensor inputs to find and track potential threats rapidly, seamlessly, connecting military decision makers with the intelligence community, enabling them to make data-driven decisions. In a deciphering perspective, to really take that final step, and that's what the forces need the most, is to be able to take swift and decisive action. At Valiant Shield, uh, the U.S. Navy successfully launched a standard missile six that uh, was the culminating event at the exercise, which ended up sinking a decommissioned frigate. Standard Missile 6, or SM6 as we'll refer to it now, is a multi-mission capability. It is truly the premier weapon inside of the surface launched uh, ships, and it continues to show its relevancy not only today, but continues to see evolutions going into the future. And although you know across, we have current capabilities, one of the things that we're looking forward to in the future is to introduce the premier Spy-6 radar, which is gonna further enhance not only the effectiveness of standard missile six, but enhance the sensing capability for uh, the surface fleets. Today we announced that our Spy-6 variant, uh, known as V-3, the ESER variant, uh, went and has been delivered to the first aircraft carrier. So if you recall, Spy-6 is a family of radars that provides incredible unmatched capability, not only for our destroyers, but then also for our aircraft carriers. By 2030, we are anticipating that, that it will be installed in over 40 ships and seven different classes of ships. Um, again, providing additional enhanced sensing capability to close the loop um, and connecting with other uh, Raytheon Technologies capabilities. However, when we look at the current multi-domain operating space, we obviously need to continue to look at undersea because that is also another domain. And so, as my colleagues have said, it is a very complex and comprehensive um, environment that we find ourselves in. When we talk about future battle spaces, one of the things that our SPY-6 is going to bring to what we refer to as distributed maritime operations, as well as undersea, there's two key elements. From a distributed maritime operation, SPY-6 is going to have the ability to be um, operating in different environments. SPY-6 is a software-defined aperture, so it can provide a um, sending and receiving mode. It can be distributed differently. As you know, it has um, scalability. So not only is it able to go on the current existing class of ships, but we are partnering to look at how you put that in an unmanned capability to have more of a smaller compact. It will also allow you to have, again, different um, capabilities, <coughs> communications, and networked moving forward. When we go to undersea, one of the other things that we are continually looking at is how we do that cross-domain underwater capability. We've been partnered with DARPA in what we call a CD MAST. It's a cross-domain maritime surveillance and targeting program, which really allows for us to do uh, communications in a multi-domain, as well as have that uh, secure system under underwater, which is one of the most complex meetings that we find ourselves operating in. We've been doing a, a lot a lot of um, simulation and modeling, and that is one of the key things as we continue to look at where do we need to take this capability, and then how do we take that data and obviously integrate it up above not only the surface, but then into space. Eventually, these modeling and simulation operations are gonna allow us to continue to combine the entire battle space. We continue to look at how we can bring not only the equities that Raytheon Technologies brings to bear, but obviously looking at what our current uh, forces have and making sure that we can simulate everything they have at their disposal to give them the most effective um, situational awareness.